Alright guys, our next guest has for a long time been one of the faces of Invicta, a former Invicta Atomweight champion. She's coming off an impressive victory from her UFC debut and returned to the strawweight division at the Tough 21 finale, the face of Samsung. It's a pleasure to welcome Michelle the Karate Hottie, Waterson to Submission Radio. How are you, Michelle? I'm great, how are you? Very well, Michelle, and welcome to the program. Now, before we get into your UFC debut, we have to discuss your ad for Samsung. You discussed how <laughs> Samsung contacted you, and you've been, a, you've been a long-time Samsung and Android user. Give us the lowdown. When did you decide that Android was the right path in your life? I just, you know, um, I, I've always had, I had T-Mobile, so when in, um, they never had iPhones. So it was just, but it wasn't by choice at first. But then I remember one year telling my husband that I wanted to see uh, what Apple was all about. And I switched over to Apple and I didn't like it at all. And so I switched right back to Samsung. And um, it's just it's so much easier for me to use. And um, I feel like I have a lot more options to customize my stuff with the Samsung. That's all right. If, if we were your husband, we'd be pretty upset the day that you uh, said that you wanted to try iPhone. We'd possibly be <laughs> filing for divorce. We've been Android guys for a long time, never succumbing to the lures and temptations that, uh, that iPhone has thrown our way. When the time is right, we imagine one of the most important discussions you'll have with your daughter is the difference between Android and Apple. Are you nervous at all about that conversation and your daughter possibly going over to the dark side, much like Darth Vader did in Star Wars Episode Three? <laughs> No, I, you know, I, hopefully by that, by that time, things will be a lot more customizable. And I don't even want to think about what technology is going to be when she's old enough to have her own phone. Yeah. Hopefully iPhone will be wiped out. But, but make no bones <laughs> about it, Michelle, it will be a major issue. Now, moving into the <laughs> MMA world, um, going into the UFC and leaving a place like Invicta, where you were one of the top draws, must have been an exciting but nervous experience for you. Did you feel like the new kid on the block going into Tough 21 finale? And what was the transition like for you? Yeah, um, it was definitely a new experience. You know, I, I've been with Invicta for the past two years, basically. And, you know, coming from an all-female organization. And, and actually, my last three fights have all been like five-round fights and um, fighting the main event. And so kind of being able to come in under the radar on such a busy week like International Fight Week was, was kind of nice because I just, you know, I went in there and took care of business and then I could just relax and chill out, you know, and watch all the fights. Did you end up enjoying the other festivities during uh, Fight Week? No, not at all. Uh, we were just really mainly in the room. and I mean, we walked the strip a little bit, but as far as all the craziness with the... Uh, fight week, we we kind of stayed away because we were just cutting weight and getting ready for the fight. Yeah, perfect. Your last fight against uh, Herica Tiburcio saw you lose your Victor Adamweight title, but it's also what led you to the UFC. After the loss, did you expect that the UFC would pick you up? And do you think that had you remained champion in Victor, you may still have been at Invicta? Of course, you know, um, that um, being a champion for Invicta was, was my... Was, my pride, you know, and uh, and Victor has done nothing but great things for me. But when I did lose that belt, I just took it as an opportunity to see what else was on the horizon, and just I, I really took it as a you know as a sign that you know everything happens for a reason. So what 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 are you going to do with this with this ball? Yeah, certainly, and signs are important in the sport. Now we're curious, what did it feel like moving back up to strawweight after being at Adam Weight for the past three years? And did you have any apprehensions about moving back up in weight? No, I don't think I would have even approached the UFC if I didn't think that I could handle myself at that weight. I'm actually really happy um, being in the straw weight division. I feel like I'm able to keep um, my strength that I've put on throughout the years. And I also am not stressed about diet. I, I'm able to train really hard. I'm still eating really good, feeling my body with good stuff. But um, my focus on my camp now is is the training and not depleting myself to get down to what I'll buy. Mm. Yeah, just curious, how draining was it for you making the cut to Adam Way and uh, with the soon-to-be in implemented IV bands, did you ever require an IV drip? I've never done IV just because I didn't want to feel like I was dependent on them. Mm. And um, so I've never done IVs, but I do understand um, how much of 
you know, of the help they really are to a lot of the athletes. Um, I, I just hope that they give the athletes enough time to, to make the adjustments. And I also, like, I, I feel like for me it's not a big deal because I did move up in weight. Um, I only really cut, like, five pounds of water weight for this last fight. But there are some people that cut close to 15 pounds of water weight, and, and there is no other division for them to go to, especially in the UFC there's only two women's divisions. Mm. for us um so it, i think it might be a tougher transition for others certainly now let's talk about the fight itself how did you feel about being in the ufc octagon and did you feel the dreaded ufc jitters at all against angela magana i i was nervous but i think it was a good nervous um i remember uh, i think they used the same cage and canvas that they had used the night before and i didn't get to see those fights but I do remember stepping into the cage and there was just blood everywhere. And I was like, mm. oh, it must have been a good night of fight. Yeah. <laughs> um, and just, I remember looking over across the cage and Dana, Dana White sitting at the, you know, at the front of the, at the foot of the cage, just looking up at me and just me thinking like, all right, here's my chance to show them what I got, you know? So mm. it was a, it was an exciting, nervous. Now, Angela Magana, you know, she's known for her trash talk. You know, people often think that she can go a little bit overboard sometimes with her tweets. You offered to shake hands at the Wayne and she just ignored you. Going into this fight, what was your, your opinion of her as a person? I, you know, I really didn't care much um, about her as a person. I, I, I was going in there to fight and I didn't want to get pulled into any type of social media trash talking. And so I just, just, I just stayed off it. I'm not sure if she ever did. Uh, end up talking um, fast to me or not because I, I never paid much of attention. But uh, yeah, I mean, <laughs> to each its own, I guess. If that's the person you want to portray, then then go for it. You know. Hmm. Yeah, and I mean, I, I imagine it'd be tough talking trash about you because you're so nice all the time. But at the beginning of the fight, Angela was able to find some success, closing the distance and getting you in a very tight armbar. Were they coming into this fight on a three-fight losing streak? Do you feel like you may have underestimated her abilities a little bit at the beginning of the fight? Oh, no. Um, I just, I think I needed to get those those initial nerves out the way and kind of find find my zone. And, and, and once I was able to get kind of a little bit more grounded, I feel like I was able to go, I was good to go, you know? Mm. Well, speaking of the armbars, you went for a number of them on Angela. They seemed close, but you weren't quite able to get uh, into the right position to finish them. It's something that has happened in past fights as well, most recently against Herica Tiburcio. How frustrating was that for you during the fight? And have you and Greg uh, had a look at what was wrong with the technique? You know, I think it's just a matter of positioning on my part. And it just wasn't in the right spot for me to even be trying to go for it. But uh, me and Coach Jackson have been working a lot Um in this camp about not getting frustrated about things and understanding whether you're in a good position or bad position or that it's just position and you have to work through it. Um, so, so having that type of mindset, I think really helps me, um, get, get out of her initial arm bar and just continue to move forward when I, when my arm bars, uh, were failing. Now you landed a right hand on Angela early on in the fight that looked like it hurt your knuckles or your hand from the way it landed. Was that the punch that hurt your hand? And can you give us an update on your hand? Have the x-rays come back yet? What's the damage? What, what are we looking at here? Um, um, yes. I don't remember when it was, but uh, I, I caught it with a pretty like hard punch. Um, and I did get x-rays on Friday, and it looks like it's a pretty clean break in my hand. But I'm still not sure what... Um, the recovery time is or anything like that. So. Okay, but unfortunately, we'll probably see you out for a while. You're currently ranked 12th in the division, but you're really a lot closer to the title than rankings would indicate. For your next fight, fans would like to see a second fight between you and Jessica Panay. You originally beat her in Invicta for the Adam White title in 2013. What do you think about that matchup? I mean, um, I, I think it's a fine matchup. I, I did have no problem fighting Jessica again. Uh, so, I mean, if, if that's what Dana White and Tom Shelby want for me, I think it'll catapult me right up to the top um, of the list as far as contender for championship. So, uh, it really is due. Um, Dana and, and uh, Sean Shelby, I, um, you know, it, it, I end up having to fight everybody in the division uh, anyway. So, 
Yeah, certainly. And you know, since it is a matchup, the fans are pretty exciting for, and you two had fought previously. And obviously, it's been a while since you last fought each other, and you've both improved leaps and bounds since the first fight that you had. How would you see a second fight between you two playing out? Would it be similar, or do you think it would play out a little bit differently? Uh, I think it would play out a little differently. I feel like my wrestling is a lot stronger now. And then just with um, both of us being able to have... Um, that size, um, the size difference from 105, I mean, I honestly feel like it would be the same result in me winning, but I do think it would play out a little differently, possibly more stand-up. Okay. While we're on the topic of Jessica, what were your thoughts on her fight with uh, Joanna Yamjacek? What was your biggest takeaway from that fight? Um, it, it's just things that I've, um, you know, have been able to study about Jessica pre- from previous from our previous fight that I that I noticed, um, Jessica is a very good fighter and she's very technical. But sometimes that can play against you, and and I feel like it did in the fight against her and Johanna because Johanna just slowly um, took away that control. And once Jessica didn't have any control, I think she um, felt like she was kind of backed into a corner and didn't know where to go. Mm. Mm. Well, you know, speaking of Joanna, considering uh, she's the most devastating striker in the UFC strawweight division, and seeing as you've been regarded as one of the most dominating strikers in Invicta, how would you see a fight playing out between both of you? Do you think you'd be able to hang in there and perhaps even outstrike the champion? Of course. Of course I do. Um, (laughs) No question about it. We're going to finish off the interview, Michelle, with something that we'd like to call the Submission Radio Tap Out Round. It's a bunch of fun, random questions we're going to throw at you, and uh, you basically answer with the first thing that comes to mind, kind of like word association. Are you ready? Okay. <laughs> All right. Share a story with us from uh, being on Bully Beatdown. What was some of the behind-the-scenes stuff that happened which fans never got to see? Um, I think uh, the biggest thing was me being – I was more nervous for that than I was for fighting because if I was to get beat up by a, by a normal person, I'd never hear the end of it from my teammates. <laughs> I'll tell you what, though. Um, there was one fight where one of the guys did get kind of hurt by one of the regular guys. That yeah. was pretty funny. Um, will this UFC strawweight ever do well in American Ninja Warrior? You and Felice Herrig have both failed <laughs> so far. Do you think there's a UFC strawweight out there that can do a bit better than you guys? <laughs> <laughs> No, <laughs> I'm gonna do it again. I'm gonna conquer the, the the challenge. Yeah, one day for all for those of us listening at home wanting to become the next American Ninja Warrior, what's one nugget of gold, a piece of advice you can share with the listeners? You really have to uh, train for it. You can't just go in there expecting because you're an athlete that you're gonna do well. You have to train for it. I feel I feel like there's like levels of athletic ability. There's like you know Olympics. There's UFC fighters, and then there's American Ninja Warriors. <laughs> They're the elite of the elite. Right. <laughs> What's hard about American Ninja Warrior is um, you get one go at it, and there you can't you can't practice on the course. Yeah. You just have to go, and um, the only thing that they have to warm up is a pull up bar and a little like uh, individual sized trampoline. Oh, I mean, wow. they should do it an Australian Ninja Warrior, but that would just involve a lot of people drinking Fosters and uh, VB beers. So there you go. <laughs> yeah. Now, perhaps one of the topic questions of the mole, Michelle, Samsung S6 or Edge, which one and why? Um, I like the Edge because mm-hmm. uh, of the convenience of the, of the side um, application. Well, there you go. The Samsung people will be loving this interview right now. Uh, you were in Megadeth's Head Crusher music video. If you could be in a, in a music video for any other artist, who would it be in what song? Um, probably Taylor Swift's uh, Bad Blood. Yeah, good song. Looks <laughs> like a pretty cool music video if they'd be in. <laughs> yeah. Now, Michelle, we know how important your apps are to yourself. We've seen the ad and how dependent you are on apps um, for your training. So what we decided to do is we decided to get the Submission Radio Marketing team to move to a cabin in Tasmania for three months to come up with three new app ideas. We want you to choose your favorite one, which you think would make the best app out of all of them, all right? So I'm going to go for the first option for you. First option is MMA Tinder. Single and sick of dealing with couch surfers, lazy Larrys, and silly Simons, MMA Tinder is the only app for fighters that lets you break down your next date by weight class, with win records, fighter bonuses, and current titles. Don't want to date someone who's been sponsored by the Condom Depot? Swipe right. Enjoy guys with scars? Swipe left. The option is yours. The slogan for the app is, don't settle for a gatekeeper, mate, with a champion, okay? So that's option number one. (laughs) Number two is the cuteness rater. 
It's important in this modern day to stay cute when putting together an outfit. However, with the weigh-ins and post-fight speeches, it's difficult to, difficult to get cute. Mm -hmm. Is your inner circle being honest with you when they say you have a cute top or your outfit, outfit is on point? The cuteness rater gives you ratings from just bleed guy, which is not very cute, to pandas in the mist, which is the cutest rating you can get. The slogan is, cute things are cute. Okay? That's and the brilliant. final, the final one, the final option, Michelle Waterson's Mobile Backstreet Boys. Basically, we record you singing Backstreet Boys classics, Backstreet Back. I want it that way. Quit playing games and, of course, everybody. Once you sign up for the app, you get one Backstreet Boys cover song per week for a small price. Once we run out of Backstreet Boys songs, we'll move on to Aqua and 90s teen sensation Hanson. The slogan is, everybody, yeah. Download Michelle Waters' <laughs> mobile Backstreet Boys, yeah. So um, those are the three options. But it'll, but it'll be sung better, of course. The, the marketing team will do the singing. I mean, you'll probably have to sing the slogan for that one, actually. That's but, true, yeah. yeah. Make the option, Michelle. Um, I like I like the second app because, number one, I don't think you should make business with pleasure. So to me, you know, like trying to date somebody, and it, uh, that's, just, that's just asking for trouble. And then uh, the third one, you don't want to hear me singing. <laughs> no good. <laughs> But I mean, just to clarify, yeah. with MA Tinder, I mean, you don't have to use it. You'd just be, I guess, the face of it. It'd be your app, but you wouldn't have to use it. But any other MA fighters that want to date and uh, mix business with pleasure, they could do that. Oh, okay. <laughs> but you're sticking with the cuteness rater. That's that's the app of choice, correct? Yes. Yeah. All right, guys. Well, don't forget to follow Michelle Waterson on Twitter at Karate Hottie MMA. Michelle, thank you so much for your time and appreciate you doing the show with us. Uh, it's great to chat to you. We'll definitely do it again soon. Thank you so much, guys. Appreciate it. Get that app out and we'll get get it going. We'll, we'll contact Google right now. Absolutely. <laughs> okay.